Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imona Project. We here at the Imona Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, inspiration, guidance, advice. And I want to continue uh, on the subject, the very important subject, of Lush and Hara. Uh, literally, a wicked tongue, an evil tongue, evil speech, uh, malicious gossip, tail-bearing, and um, specifically with respect to Miriam. Uh, in the book of Numbers, Miriam uh, starts talking about uh, Moses with respect to his uh, wife, the Cushite woman. Cush being south of uh, Egypt, whether it's southern Egypt, where the Nubians were, or whether it was what we now call Ethiopia, further up on the Nile, there was talk about her. I'm not going to get into the details of what the talk was. I'm just going to concentrate on the um, Lashon Hora and what we can uh, glean uh, from, uh, from the text. Um, it was um, Harav Shmuel Truvitz. Um, who found that the root of the sin in um, it was in um, God's uh, reprimand to um, Aaron and Miriam in verse 8. Why did you not fear to speak about my servant, about Moshe, about Moses? These glaring words um, speak of the not only the nature, but of the depth of their sin. They didn't fear talking about Moses. Did they not realize who Moses was? Uh, what he represented? His uh, exalted position, not just uh, to the Jewish people, but his position uh, in his um, uh, unparalleled virtue, his piety, his relationship with God. How did they dare? speak about Moshe as if he was just some guy, or even on a parallel with other great, righteous, holy people. They did not properly appreciate his preeminence. They placed him on the same pedestal as other Nevi'im, as other prophets. This is in itself, this was a grave error, indicating their inaccurate perception of Moses' greatness. And this is the essence of Lashon Hara. We neither fully realize nor appreciates, appreciate a person's uh, true nature. Aaron and Miriam underestimated Moses, and we frequently do not judge people in the full context. We don't judge them favorably. We don't ex uh, ascribe to them um, uh, their proper prestige and, and recognition. A failure to hold an individual in proper esteem, that's the seed from which Lashon Hara germinates. And this applies to all forms uh, of Lashon Hara. Uh, the specific prohibition against actual speech, articulating slander against someone. Uh, but the, the origin of the malicious, malicious speech, whether you're telling something that's true or telling something that, that's a lie, whether you're like um, hinting at it broadly or saying something in a way that while not mentioning the person's name, the other person can figure out who it, who it is, it results in the it it, it results from this um, giving a person less recognition than he should deserve. Another example, Miriam is is the uh, is usually the prime example, the paradigm, the spies, the spies uh, that um, the Meraglim who went into Israel, that uh, Moses sent to Israel to check out the land. Is it is it fortified? Is there is there pasture? Is you know is there fresh water? And they come back. Two of them says, we can take it. We can take them. It's, it's great. It's fantastic. Ten, they spoke Lashon Hara. They said, well, the land is full of giants, and we feel we're like ants compared to them, and, and it's, it's fortified, and you know, it's hopeless. And the people hearing this had a certain degree of uh, 
sympathy with that uh, position. They didn't recognize the gift that the Creator was giving to the Jewish people. They didn't fully uh, recognize. Uh, they were blind to all of the good qualities of the land uh, of Israel. They didn't give it the proper esteem. They didn't give it the proper um, respect, the, the proper appreciation. And while they were up, they, um, they hinted rather broadly uh, that uh, they um, did not estimate, they didn't have bitachon, they didn't have trust in God's ability to bring them into this nation, into the promised land. And the punishment for the Lashon Hara, 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, being kept away from the land of Israel, two generations. The generations that were around uh, at the time of the, of the spies, most of them died out. Um, and the people who had the schos, had the merits to actually come in and conquer the land, were um, the Israelites who grew up knowing nothing but Judaism. They did not have that slave mentality from the people who came out of Egypt. And they were able to, uh, um, to appreciate the land they were coming in, uh, coming into. Um, it was Chaim, Harav Chaim Shmulevitz, that the 40 uh, days of looking, as it were, with closed eyes and this myopic uh, vision and not correctly perceiving Hashem's precious gift um, to the Israelites, that instigated their slanderous speech, that disregard, as we said before, that's uh, where the seed of Lashon Hara uh, germinates. Sad to say, um, 3,500 years later, people have not changed all that much. Uh, we still speak in L Lashon Hara, sadly. And the origin of our disparaging uh, um, comments have, uh, have not changed much. We disregard people. We think they are less than what they are. Um, and this is especially with, true with respect to Torah scholars and um, educators, people who have uh, devoted their entire life to Torah. Uh, sadly, I heard uh, a young woman I know uh, make a comment with respect to a rabbi uh, that we both knew. And I was, I was stunned to hear uh, her disregard um, against a man who has literally devoted and dedicated his entire life to Torah, talking about him as if he was just some like some ordinary zlub in the synagogue. It was it was shocking. Um, whether it's a lack of perception on our part, failure to appreciate, to perceive um, a person. Um, whether a person's nature is to go out of his way to seek the negative in someone, um, to exploit a shortcoming, to accentuate a person's uh, flaws and failings and faults. Let's look to the origin of Lashon Hara, because maybe if by looking at what causes the seed to germinate, what, what brings it about, we can nip it in the bud. Um, don't wait until you're already on a roll talking about somebody. It's too late. The tongue is a very, they say the tongue is the strongest muscle um, because it, uh, it can destroy almost anything. Um, concentrate on the uh, origins and uh, maybe, maybe uh, we can stop the horrible, horrible curse of Lushen Hora, of evil speech uh, amongst each other. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back, please watch, please learn, and until next time, on behalf of the Emoto Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.